You ever been hit by a real man or like a daddy woman? You ever been kidnapped or played hide-and-go-seek rather poorly? You ever eaten candy in the pews at church, you sugary little Hester Prynne? I was in Philadelphia all weekend. I had a sensual relapse. I got my first guest coming on, a troubled brother that I met at the DMV. Oh, welcome to This Past Weekend. This Past Weekend. That's a bad rendition of uh, of the Rocky song, man. Welcome to This Past Weekend. Uh, I put that out there because I was in Philadelphia. But today, it's going to be May. It's May 1st, man. I believe it's May 1st, 2017. And I appreciate you guys being here with me, man. Um, We got a lot going on. We have a guest coming in. I got my first guest, uh, this troubled gentleman that I met. um, And I say troubled, but, you know, a man who's going through things. Uh, just like we all are, he and I kind of bonded at the DMV. It's a uh, Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, it's a great equalizer of humanity. You know, everybody has to go there, and um, and he and I were both there at the same time. And he had an issue with a Snicker bar. I think it was a Snicker, maybe a Payday. It could have been a, been been a Payday candy. And he, um, but he was making me laugh. And and I thought I would have him on, man. So he and I have been communicating. He's coming in today. Uh, Steven is the gentleman's name. This past weekend, I was in Philadelphia, uh, the city of brotherly love. Um, unless you're over off of Godfrey and Second Avenue, then uh, a couple brothers over there were not loving each other. Um, saw two gentlemen. Uh, one of them was it looked like a tire iron from kind of far away. They were, I don't know if they were beating each other, but definitely tapping each other one of them was tapping the other guy real hard with a with a tire iron and i don't know if you can i don't know if you can not beat somebody with a tire iron i don't know if you can just you know casually hit hit somebody with a tire and so it looked like a beating to me uh but i had a good time in philadelphia i hadn't spent much time there i went to an event called night at the fights um and bernard hopkins was there uh, one of the greatest uh, welterweight champions, I believe, of our time. I believe it's welterweight. Um, and this gentleman, I saw him one time outside of a fast food joint here in Los Angeles. But uh, Philadelphia is his, is his home city there. And he looked, you know, he looked very like his face had been kind of I don't want to say rearranged, and I'm not shaming him. I'm just saying I'd never seen a boxer up close this much, and he looked like like a child had kind of made his face, or like an artistic child, um, a a r not a u, like an artistic child had kind of made his face out of a uh, paper mache or something, you know, kind of, you know, from one of those. Um, you know, like they'd put it on a balloon. Remember how you used to do that in in school? You would do an arts and crafts. And I really, I felt like I excelled at arts and crafts personally. Um, and that's, you know, that's something I felt like I did do well with. Glue and all the craft materials. But, um, but anyhow, it looked like his face had been, like a child had made it on a balloon. You know, you put the paper mache on, then you pop it. And you're left with what you created, kind of a little sunken in because the balloon is now gone. It's not supporting the paper mache. And it looked a little bit like that, like like his face had been just slightly kind of renovated. Um, like it, like his eye was like, you know, like here an eye, there an eye, um, everywhere a lip, lip, kind of like um, like old, old McDonald, I guess, man, I. I didn't realize I'm kind of breaking into that cancer there. But, yeah, kind of old McDonald's. Just, you kind of – it was like – you ever remember those things on the wall that you had to get close to and then slowly back away from? And they would – it would form a picture and you could see it. It was like a – it used to be a – it was a book or sometimes people would have them framed on their walls or something. And, and the image would appear. It was like a 3D image but not if you were just looking. It was kind of like that a little bit uh, with Mr. Hopkins' face. And again, I'm not shaming him. I'm just letting you know, uh, you know, what a championship boxer looks like years later. 
And it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Like, uh, like if you got close, you were kind of like, oh, what is this? But if you kind of move back slowly, then you're like, oh, boom, uh, that's Bernard Hopkins. Uh, so it was interesting to be there. It was a, it was a charity event um, where I was performing, um, and they had some singers uh, called Brotherly Love there in Philadelphia, four young gentlemen who were extremely talented, and they had a lot of great fights. They had five uh, sanctioned boxing matches, and they had four, I believe, celebrity matches. And I'd never been to a boxing match. You know, I don't know if you guys have been to boxing I'm not, I, I've never, I've been beaten a few times by people. Um, I, I have a dream where I've repeatedly punched this, uh, this Ranga, this red haired kid. I repeatedly punch him. He works at a Popeye's chicken. He's a manager. And I, re I have a dream where I repeatedly punch him. So that's kind of like a fight. I guess I've kind of won. I don't know if he's even allowed to punch me. It's a dream of mine, but, um, and then I remember one of my friends, actually, when I was in middle school, we weren't friends at the time, but he was the biggest guy in our school. Bradley was his name. And, um, and, he, uh, and he and I were, f you know, facing, each facing off against each other. And I knew it was going to escalate. And I was hoping it didn't, but I didn't want to look like a wimp. And all the kids were circled around. And somebody took I had my arms by my side somebody took my fist and pushed it into him and then he uh beat me that man well he wasn't a man but he was as much of a man as you could see in the fourth or fifth grade he beat me pretty decently but they had a program at our school in middle school and this was at CJ Shane middle school the same school that Lee Harvey Oswald used to attend so just to add a little bit of texture to the environment um, and at our school, if you got in a fight, they had a man named Lawton McKee, and he was the principal, not the principal. That was his motto. I'm your principal. And he would make you hug. So you and the man, whoever you got in a fight with, your co-fighter, or my, your beater in this point, I mean, I felt like a spouse in this thing. I felt like a 1970s spouse. Um, you had to stand there in the hallway for the rest of the day with your arms on each other's shoulders. And that let everybody know that you were fighting. Um, it was kind of like you were shamed a little bit. Um, it was almost like when they used to put your head like in the guillotine or whatever, you know, and they would make you stay in the stocks or whatever all day in like the 1600s or whatever or something. Robin Hood times. But, um, but anyhow, me and this guy Bradley had to stand there and you basically have to hug each other all day. You have to keep your hands on the other person's shoulders. And all the kids between classes are running by and really embarrassing but he and I became uh, great friends from that because you just it's a, it's a great you, you get connected because you're standing there you can't be enemies at a certain point you know you're joking around or you're you know you get past it so I thought that was a pretty neat method that they used in middle school and he became became a friend of mine but those are some of the fights that I've been in uh, mostly light beatings or my mother beat me a lot when I was a child um what else? That was pretty much it. But uh, but it was so it was cool to see some fights, man. It was cool to see. I mean, just the intensity of it. I mean, these guys are like, just like violent ballerinas. Uh, the footwork, and they flew a lot of uh, fighters up from Mexico, and um, they had five fighters from Philadelphia, and they had three. Three of them were facing Mexican fighters. And, um, and it seemed like they were just to kind of fluff their records a little bit, you know, like they fly these guys up from Mexico. They probably pay them, you know, maybe 1500 or two grand for flying up. And I mean, some of them took, some of them took some beatings. Um, it was kind of sad a little bit. I felt, I, first of all, I felt like it might not even happen anymore with the North American free trade agreement, you know, looming trouble looming there. But this might be the end. This might be the last time some of these guys come up here and get beaten. Um, and they might not always get beaten. I mean, I hadn't been to fights before, but they seemed like sacrificial lambs sort of to, to you know, to potentially pad, pad the, the records of these Philadelphia boxers. Um, and it was wild to watch, man. I mean, just just the intensity of it. It blew my mind, man. It blew my mind. And <clears throat> But some of the boxers... 
the Latino guys, it was almost like when the, you, you know, when you put a mouse, when you feed a snake, you know, and I never had a snake. I lived with a boy that had a snake one time and it bit him. It kept biting him. And then it, I think it choked to death, honestly, on a gumball. He was in the gumball business. He was um, slinging balls at local uh, grocery stores and outlets. This is back when gum was king. This is 15 years ago, you know, at least. And he had a snake that I think choked to death on a, is it a gum? I think it was a gumball, honestly. I don't, I don't remember too much more about it. But, um, and ironically, I think it was a ball python. And that's not a joke. I think that's what it was. But anyhow, um, and I remember he would feed him these mice. You know, he'd put these mouses or, yeah, small mouse in there, small. And he'd put them in there. And, and it was, I felt, you know, I, it just, I hated watching that, man. I hated watching a snake get fed. And I know it's the chain of, I know it's the food chain, you know. It's like when I eat a chicken, you know, if there's another chicken over at the window looking in, it probably, you know, feels disappointed that this is how it goes, that I just buy it and thaw it out and cook it. I mean, at least he, at least this mouse had a chance in there. It was alive, but it didn't really have a chance against a snake. And that's how I felt with some of these Mexican fighters. You know, they fly them up. Um, it's a, it's a real fight. It's sanctioned, so it counts against their record and the Philadelphia fighters' records. And some of them did did a great job. I mean, there were a couple guys I thought had a, uh, a chance to win. One of the guys I, I almost thought was going to beat the Philadelphia boxer, um, but it was. Uh, but then it, it just reminded me of that. Just that that snake just. Like, dang, you know this mouse doesn't have a chance. And it's in there, and it's feeling its life out, but it just looks scared. Because I guess I romanticized it, you know? I guess I always romanticized when I heard that that a snake ate a mouse. I guess I felt like a mouse probably was somewhere and was cold or maybe didn't have clothes. And then a snake, like, like a snake came along and was like, oh, hey, you know, hey, cold mouse, why don't you get inside of my mouth? It's warm in my mouth. And then a mouse just got in there and and then it just swallowed it like trickery. I didn't think it was as violent as it is when you see a, a mouse just fighting for its life um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in a cage where a snake lives, in a snake's cage. So that, that that's kind of what... Uh, what seemed like occurred to, to me. That's what was going on in my brain as I watched some of these uh, Mexican fighters, you know, just fighting for their lives out there against some of these uh, Philadelphia boxers. Some amazing boxers, man. If you haven't been to a boxing match, um, it's good, man. I mean, the closest I'd seen to boxing in a while was probably um, I saw some UFC recently, and then I saw some Real Housewives of Atlanta a few years back, and those bitches were getting pretty legit on there. Um, some hand action. What else, man? Uh, sensual update. I'll hit you guys with that, dude. I, I'd been doing pretty decent. I'd strung together about seven days of uh, laying off the masty and um, not doing any self gratification. No jerky. No, no heavy touching, man. Some sometimes even if I wanted to grab myself or in my pecker area, I would just instead just press my palm against my penis hard, just real hard and kind of just you know vibe there a little for a second but i wouldn't do any you know actual you know trying to pleasure myself um i committed to try and go 90 days without uh doing masturbation and some of you guys i've gotten calls from people on the hotline and we're going to get some calls in a little bit we're going to have our first guest in today um i'll tell you about that in just a second but i've gotten calls people are like what, what do you ever get some masturbation man you know like I'm from, I'm from another country, you know, what do you have against like, we can't jerk off, you know, it's good for you. And I feel that man, it is, if you, if you don't have an issue, if you haven't, you know, if you don't have a bad habit of it, then yeah, I'm not saying don't masturbate. I'm not saying don't touch yourself or do pleasure. Okay. Or find pleasure in your crotch or do special things with yourself. But I'm saying to people that haven't a issue that have created a bad habit of it, which in my life, it is, when I look back on my life, it has been a bad habit. It's I've created a bad habit where it's not, I don't just get pleasure out of it. 
I get some sense of shame out of it. So that's why I'm trying to correct. That's why I'm trying to correct myself. I'm not telling you if you don't do, you know, spraying or self skeeting and you don't have an issue with it, you're fine. You don't think it makes you, you don't feel any shame, then that's fine. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just sharing what I am doing. Okay. So I just want that to be known. Um, but yeah, you know, so, so I got to start over, man. I got to start over. I'm going for 90 days. Um, I have a sponsor. I know that sounds crazy. I have basically like a masturbation sponsor where you check in, kind of let them know what's going on. Um, and that's awkward. I mean, I, you know, that's awkward to make that call and leave a voicemail to a man and let him know that you've been touching yourself, you know, when you're in your 30s. So, so I'm not feeling super bad because I, you know, I'd had a good week there. Um, I didn't look at any pornography. I've done a good stretch off of pornography. And I think pornography is the devil, dude. And you can think it's not, and that's fine if you're using it comfortably. But I got to a point where it was a bad habit. So for me, that's Satan's little puppets out there when I see pornography. So that's how I feel. I feel like it's ruining men, okay? It's taking away some of our sensuality. It's uh, killing chi. It's a chi killer, bruh. And it's enough of that going on out in the mainstream media. They're trying to kill men. They don't want us here, okay? I believe that. They want strong lesbians. I feel like they'll probably have underground labs where they're trying to grow stack meat onto a lesbian and they don't even need men anymore and i you know and that's a very much a possibility you know you drive by you hear about these bunkers and stuff and i don't even know if it's the military anymore you know years ago it was the military doing weird shit you know like trying to you know put baby's eyes into a grown man we'd always hear that rumor or you know different stuff like that um you know trying to switch people's legs and make them dance or you know different stuff but now i think it's big business you know it's probably google down there trying to you know t you know not tie but sew or knit a man's crotch onto a woman or they're trying to get rid of us so by us spraying out on the internet every night and waking up all good 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 we're not helping our own cause man i strongly believe that so anyhow, onward. Um, but that's what's going on with me. I had to do a sensual update and check in with you guys, let you know where I'm at. I am feeling some remorse. I'm going to go for 90 days, though. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. What else can I get into? I saw that uh, President Trump didn't go to the correspondence dinner, which I thought was hilarious. He went to Harrisburg to spend time with his fans. What would you do? You're gonna, it's like going over to like, it's like going to a bunch of chicks that hate you's house. Guess what, chicks? Not gonna come over there, okay? I'm gonna go hang out with a couple of bad bitches that I know enjoy my company. Like, I just get what he's doing. Like, you know, like it just seemed like such a beef. I thought half the jokes that they played about him were gutter anyway, were Muppet. I mean, it's kind of hard when the only people that can be made fun of anymore are white people. You know, um, but I'm not going to get political, man. I got I got a guest coming in um, and I want to tell you about him. Uh, he'll be in in just a few minutes. First, I want to tell you about these dates this weekend, uh, May 6th and 7th. I'll be in Phoenix, Arizona. My mother used to live there outside of Glendale and she actually lives in Tucson now. I just remembered that. Uh, and she's seeing a gentleman that has Alzheimer's and they're doing stuff out there together. What else? Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. That's pirate country. A um, lot of deviant ex-husbands and uh, bad mustaches down there in Tampa. Um, that's May 25th to uh, May 28th. I'll be there at Side Splitters. June 1st through 4th, I'll be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I caught Pink Eye there one time. Um, Cordell Stewart allegedly got a blowjob there years ago in a sand trap on the uh, Shenley Park golf course. Uh, what else? Um, I got a blowjob there behind the Giant Eagle, which is just a Kroger. They rename it, I guess, when you get up uh, into that region. That's just a Kroger grocery. 
Uh, June 23rd and 24th, I'll be in New York City at Gotham Comedy Club. And um, Gotham Comedy Club, that's over there off, I think, like 25th and 3rd or 23rd and 5th. I'm excited about that. And June 30th, I'll be in Wyoming, Illinois. That's near the Quad Cities in Iowa. It's about 40 minutes from Peoria, Illinois. Um, it's my mother's hometown. And we're doing a beautiful fundraiser there uh, in that area. So you can come. So you, so you can come and check that out. We're doing a beautiful fundraiser there. Tickets are on sale on theovon.com slash tour for all of those. Uh, it's the Hampton Ain't Easy Tour. You can still get the album online. Um, and I got a guest, guys. I know I've talked about it. I'm nervous about it. Um, and I also want to let you know, I'm, I'm. yeah, I didn't even tell you the backdrop today. I just... I just felt comfortable, man. We're here at Conscious Studios in uh, in Santa Monica, um, and I met a gentleman. Basically, we basically met off the internet, off the webs, you know. And um, gentleman Sherb, and he's a he's a producer. He runs audio, and and he invited me to come in here and try to be here in his in their studio tonight, uh, at Conscious Studios. Um, so I'm really. You know, I feel fortunate about that because I had no plan for this. No plan, you know? I mean, I didn't have a big plan anyway, you know? Um, I mean, I just have, you know, I just feel grateful that this happened. Here I am. I'm sitting in a beautiful studio. They had a dog here earlier. Beautiful dog. I don't know how old it was, maybe a middle-aged or younger animal. Um, And here I am enjoying myself here. And feeling comfortable, man, I forgot to tell you that I was here. I'm sure you're like, where are you? Are you in like a space lab? No, I'm here at Conscious Studios. Uh, I got a guest coming in, guys. Um, He's going to be here in just a moment. I met a gentleman at the DMV, and we chatted briefly as gentleman Steven. Um, And he seemed kind of uneven to me, you know. Um, He seemed a little, he seemed like he'd been through a lot. And we all go through things, and but he had a lot of joy. He also had like a, he was a little bit wild in the eyes. I could tell that he'd been uh, through some of the ups and downs. And I invited him here tonight, and he's coming. I didn't know if he would come, uh, but he's going to be here momentarily. So I'm excited to kind of talk to him. I don't know kind of how it's going to go, you know, but I, uh, but I am excited. I'm excited that he's coming. Yeah, man, you can scoot over next to it too if you, you want to see a little bit cooler on you it. You can hear me? Yep, you can hear him. We're I good, you, man. I thank you a lot. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I thank you. Uh, so, Steven, I met you at the DMV. I met you. And uh, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool, man. You were chilling, and you had your you had a um, something was wrong with your leg at the time. What yeah, was that about? I had that boot on. Yeah. Now the boot is off. <laughs> yeah, you look healthier, look, man. Look, you see it. Yeah, look, man. You, you got, see it. Oh, you got I both can stand wheels. Up, I, I can stand up. You got both wheels, man. <laughs> Are you feeling better? I, I'm. I, you know what? I feel a lot better, but I, uh, inside it's like hurting, but I, I still feel it though. Yeah, it's like it, it, the pain never leave you. Yeah, when you get hurt, yeah, you never the pain never leave you. Oh, you think it like stays if, in your body? Like if you get shot or whatever, you still gonna feel it. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know. So what's been going on with you, man? Since I saw you. Um, what's it like, man? Tell me about your life a little bit. I mean, bit. my life is going on. It's going good. Yeah. And I'm trying to check myself in a program or whatever. I'm, you know, I'm living downtown L.A. Okay, nice, man. And it's like, Lord, I'm, I'm, uh, I scream the name of the Lord. I'll be like, man, let me get up out of this uh, situation that I'm in. Yeah. And I don't want to be in this situation I'm in. So I got to say, hey, let me check myself in a program or something. Yeah. Like and a thirty-day program, you know, seven day. Because I'm in a, I'm twelve in a, months. Are you tw- a long term? Yeah, yeah, long term. It's yeah. like twelve months. To you know, what I'm saying it's a long term. Yeah, like, you know, like you said. Yeah, I feel that, man. I'm. I, I just got nine months sober. I just hit nine, nine months, months sober. Yeah, that's a good thing. So I just got. This is the first time you know I've been what? into um into a program, but I just I just got nine, nine months. months. Yeah, so I'm. Uh, congratulations. Thank I you, mean, man. I can I can say that though. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean I'm, I appreciate uh, you that. know. That, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Like, you could teach me how to do it, you know. Well. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, you said it on the way in, just having, you know, I, I have the toughest time trying to control my own life instead of just turning it over to a higher power. 
That's my toughest problem, man. It's 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 tough with me too. But yeah, it's, it, it, it's tough. I want to control it, everything. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's not that tough though. Look, it's not. But once we, you start we make fighting them demons in you, yeah, you go. You try to fight the demons on your own. Yeah, when when some, it's a higher power that can do it. For you, can do it for you. you know what but saying? we try to do, it. and then we <laughs> you answer your own question. There you go, <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> there you go, young man. Why do we do that? You think? Why do we continually try to control everything, man? Why do mm. why why do we have such a tough time? You think turning it over? Because we still try to control our own destiny. We be like, hey, I want to do it for myself. I want to do this. I can do it by myself. Yeah. I'm Spider-Man. I'm Superman. or what, Whoever the character that yeah. you claim to be. Yeah. I'm He-Man Somebody or whoever. Fancy. The Castle of Grayskull or whatever. Yeah. The Castle of Grayskull is nothing mm -mm. compared to the Lord, Father God, or yeah. Father God, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever Which, higher power. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you... That higher power, That's man. what I can say, Yeah. I feel you, man. So where are you from, Steve? I'm from South Central. I'm from L.A. You grew up in South Central? I grew up in L.A., South Central. And what was it like when you were growing up here? When man? I was grew it... up, I gangbang, and uh, I didn't mean to gangbang, but I, I'm, a, I'm a nerd. I went to school, and my mama and daddy whooped my ass. Yeah. And I, I meant to go to school. Yeah. But it was like, we had a three-bedroom house in Long Beach. Yeah. So it wasn't no problem. Uh, we got fed, we got our ass whooped when it was need to be. But, That's uh, the two things my mother did, man. <laughs> I took a lot of L's, but she made some macaroni, <laughs> yeah. you know? You I to took a your... lot of L's, but she made decent macaroni, my mother did. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, my mama was making them so you know, she made, uh, what was that, the the the, 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 the red, red beans and rice? Yeah. And then uh, she made the, uh, damn, it was the uh, sardines. Sardines, huh? Sardines. I didn't eat that, man. Nah, That's but it, not my it vibe. was something else too, though. It was the uh, salmon, salmon patties. Oh yeah, it was the salmon patties. But you if you popping Deans, man, I never popped you, any it, Deans, man. I didn't eat m salmon patties. Oh yeah, you ever ate salmon, salmon patties? patties? Uh uh. But you know what? I had an ex girlfriend, and her uh, her mother used to make them all the time. Salmon I didn't need them, but people like them though. Salmon patties. Yeah, people like them. Salmon patties. Salmon they patties. Cook, man. They cook them like a little. It's like a burger. Yeah. They can put them with, uh, they do Lay's potato chips with them. Yeah. Whew. It's a beautiful snack. <laughs> it is. It's a beautiful snack, it man. It is. Is that a, is it, what's your sandwich of choice these days, you think? My sandwich of choice is like, uh, uh, I do a uh, turkey sandwich. Yeah, me too. I do turkey with, uh, like, uh, you give me some Swiss cheese, uh, Swiss cheese, turkey. Yeah. And then I could do some bologna with it. Damn, I mean, turkey I, and bologna. I, I, yeah, I could do it like that. Wow. And it, it wouldn't, you know? Yeah. It wouldn't, no harm, no foul. I never had that, man. So you go do turkey, bologna. Uh, I don't know what they call it. Salami. Yeah, damn. You, know you what like saying? Sometimes they meat, do it, huh? Yeah, because when you smoke crack, you know, you, you you coming off that crack. I ain't smoked crack for two years. Oh, wow. Congratulations, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't smoked no crack for two years. But yeah. uh, meth, I don't know. Yeah. Meth is like, it's hard to control. Is it really? It is. Meth is hard to, you know, it's hard to get off that meth. I never had trouble with that, man. I've had trouble you with never, some cocaine, but I never had any problems with uh, meth. With never? meth. Never? How? I just, I don't How know. How did that happen? I feel fortunate. How did you I dodge didn't. that? You know, I didn't get involved with the dr with drugs too much. You know, I just got, I'd, I'd started to have some problems with it, and that's when I started to. Leave it alone? Yeah. I got into it through trying to be hard. I wanted yeah. to be a man. So. Yeah. I wanted to be a man, and uh, and it's hard to be a man out here without a kid. You know, you gotta be figuring, out, you gotta figure out your way out in life. And it's like, damn, how do I figure out one more way in life without a kid? I gotta be a man, and I don't have a kid. Do you have? But, uh, do you have any children? I don't have a children. I don't have no child now. Yeah. Not that I know about. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to figure that one out right now. But uh, I'm 41 years old, and it's hard to figure it out now. So. And you know? what did you, when you were, when you were younger, what did you want to be when you were younger? When I was young, I wanted to just be just like my daddy, just to work and just bring home bread. Yeah. And just feed my kids. And just be like my daddy. Because my daddy, I got three sisters and a brother. Yeah. Oh, y'all had five children I got then. three, yeah. I got three sisters and a brother. And, and they me. all live in Los Angeles? It's five. Yeah, they all like South Central, uh, Los Angeles. 
But uh, it's like all, that's all I wanted to be, like my daddy. I just wanted to have kids and just take care of them and just work and come home and sleep and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> whoop their butt when they needed to be whooped. You know, like you know, what I'm saying, just yeah. be like my daddy. Like you know, what I'm saying, that's how my daddy was. Do you think you'll still have a chance to uh, to be a father in your life? I do. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't never leave that out. I never leave that out. My, uh, I never leave that out. I never leave it out. Yeah. I never leave myself out to count. Like you know, what I'm saying, I could leave myself out, but I, I never leave myself out. Yeah. Cause my my daddy taught me that. He said, "Man, never leave yourself out. Always count yourself in." Yeah. Never leave yourself out. Always count yourself in. You know what I'm saying? You never know when you can win. Yeah. You know, just like the lottery or whatever. Yeah. Like you scratch a ticket. I see a lot of people scratching tickets nowadays. Yeah, yeah you know nowadays. Yeah. 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 And it's like you never know when you can lose, I mean, or win, you know. But yeah, you're a survivor, man, it seems like. Yeah, I have to be. What's if you don't mind chairman, like what's like a day in your life like these days, you know? My day in the life is like just going to go panhandle and go get some change and then make about 10 20 bucks and uh and try to get some weed and uh and that's it like you know and uh don't bother nobody like, yeah if i bother somebody it seems like oh you know, i'm your father or whatever it seems like i'm you know i don't i don't want to be no better than nobody like you know it's like i gotta be humble yeah I'm being humble nowadays. It's like I don't want to be in nobody's way. Like I'm like a like like one of them little flies, like a butterfly or yeah. something. I don't want to be in nobody's way. Like <laughs> you just want to stop in, go, stop in, go. Yeah, just <laughs> just like that. Yeah, just hey, you see me? Now you don't see me. But then when you see me, it's like it's a good thing. Every time you see me, it's a good thing. It's yeah, not nothing bad. Yeah. So it seemed like your life's probably had ups and downs in it. Do you blame anybody for the 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 things in your life? I don't for blame the tough nobody. times. Because I, I, I go through moments where I blame. I feel like I go through moments mostly where I blame myself. Don't probably. blame nobody. Blame blame your. I do. I blame yeah. myself. I can't blame nobody else. Like just like you said, I don't blame nobody else. Yeah. I can't find nobody else to blame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? When you go searching through things and stuff like that, you go digging and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, how did I end up in the place where I'm at? Yeah. You can't never blame nobody. Yeah. Nobody's to blame. Have you battled with addiction for a long time? Or I, no? I have. Yeah. I'm 41 years old. Right. You I've look good for 41, man. I mean, <laughs> I've been battling them with this little you know, addiction for a long time, but uh, it's like I'm just, it's a long time battling. It's with a addiction. tough battle. Yeah. It ain't, you know, you just get through it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you look at yourself in the mirror every day and be like, this is me. Yeah. I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you go out and do it. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to and keep then my you get easy to it. You do know? you find it's hard to keep your hopes up sometimes? Sometimes I find it's hard to keep my hopes up. Sometimes you just can't do it, though. You can't, you know, just like you say, you blame yourself. So when you blame yourself, it ain't hard to do it. You just go through, you go through your thought. You, do, you go through your life. Yeah. Your addictions. That's your addiction. Not nobody else's. Right. It ain't nobody else's problem but yours. Yeah. So, you know, that's how I live my life. I mean, you know, I don't live my life blaming nobody else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know? Do you feel like you could have done something different that would have put you in a better place so far? I, I, I believe that. I, I, I believe that. I believe that. Because I, I look to... back on my life and I know there's some choices I could have made like, I'm grateful for where I am, you know, because I'm grateful I'm still alive. I'm grateful I wake up every day with an opportunity um, to make my life better or to try and at least try and be a better person. Um, but is there anything specific that you look back on and regret? Yeah, I do. A lot of things. Like, I didn't did dope, and I didn't, you know, I didn't. When you do that dope, you do math, I didn't did, you know. When I went with men, I did all that stupid, silly thing. Oh, yeah, that happens you know on drugs. You know what I'm saying? I didn't did all that silly thing. That happens on drugs. I didn't all that, did all that silly thing. But that's thing. not us. That's the you drugs. You know what I'm saying? I'm a man. I mean, I'm a man. Of, I mean, I'm a child of God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a, you know. But, uh, but I that's blame, the drugs. I don't blame nobody for the do the, 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 what they do when you do that drug. Yeah. I don't blame nobody for what they do. Yeah. Yeah, I can't blame nobody. But uh, if you do it when you're sober... 
I can blame you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you, you like to party a little. Sober, yeah. yeah. If you do it when you're sober, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, you know. What were your dreams like when you were young? I mean, I wanted to be a, you know what? I wanted to be just like my daddy. Like, I yeah. wanted to just fix computers. Like, I, I'm good at uh, electronics. I'm good at doing that, fixing things. Yeah. I always fix things. Yeah. My mama and my daddy, they, uh, I mean, my mama always called me like, hey, come fix this. <laughs> I'll fix it. You were the fixer. Every, everything. I'm the fixer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And what That's are your what dreams like now, really, like when you now, think about it? Now it's still the same thing. I mean, it never changed, though. It's just like the same thing. But it's just like when you drink a lot and when you smoke a lot and when you put things in your life and you put things in your system, Yeah, it changed the whole situation. Up. You know, Your whole ideas change up. Did you, you know, know that you were addicted at first or did you just think you were having a good time? I never knew that until I went to a program. Yeah, yeah. They teach you that when you when you go to a program, they teach you that. They yeah. Like, hey, you, this and you that. But uh, I don't let them learn me. You know, I learn myself through the. You know, I read the Bible a lot. Yeah. You know, I go to God a lot. You yeah. Know what I'm saying, and uh, can't nothing stop you when you go to Him. That's can't it. Can't nothing stop you when you go to Him. Do you see? Like, do you feel like your life can continue to get better, or it do you can. feel like is it, it tough I mean, to it get can. from where you are in your life to a better spot? Like, I'm really curious. Like, what is it like? It can get better, but uh, in my mind, it seemed like oh, I can't go nowhere because when people, it seemed like I let people judge me, but I should not let that. I should not let nobody judge me. You were yeah. You're concerned with I what people, people think. I, I, me too, man. My mind is like that, like, and I shouldn't let that, but I let that overcome me sometimes. Like, yeah, damn. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I think people you think that I'm, I'm no good. About? Yeah, <laughs> that they don't want me around. Yeah, I'll be like, like, damn, you can, you know what I'm saying? Look, look, looking at people like, oh, you're laughing at me or whatever. I mean, I let people like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like sometimes if I hear somebody laugh far away. They might be having a good time. They might not even know me. Know me. But they I will think know, yeah. that they're laughing <laughs> they, they talk at about me. me or whatever. <laughs> I think they're laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, and I think that. And I shouldn't let that overcome me. You know? I let those things overcome me, and I shouldn't do that. But, uh, it, it, you know, it works yeah. itself out, though. Then, well, that's what I, then, then that's where the liquor come at. Yeah. That's when I get the drinking. Yeah, because you want to wanna not feel that bad feeling. That pain, yeah. yeah. Steven, man. Yeah. Even Steven? Even Steven or uneven Steven? What do they no, call you? Look. E that's even, huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's even. I like what you said. <laughs> even Steven. <laughs> Thank you, man. I like your You're attitude. You're a good brother, man. man. You're a good brother. What, so what advice would you give to young people or to anybody, man, that's out there that's struggling with addiction, man, that's you know really what? struggling? I'll give them, you know what? Just, you know what? If you're going to do it, do it. Do it around your mama, do it around your daddy, do it at home. When you do it, do it at home. Do it with your family. Don't do it with no strangers. Yeah. You know, when you get high, do it with some people that you know. Yeah. Don't do it around no strangers that don't know you. You know, that's all I can say to the youngsters. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do it around some people that you love, like some loved ones. Yeah. Don't do it around no strangers that don't care about you. Like too at much. least be smart about it. Be smart about it. Yeah, like you said. Yeah. Well, Steve, man, I appreciate you coming and hanging out, dude. Yeah, uh, thanks. Would you come back again sometime and just kind of I mean, let me know what's going on? I will. Man. And let I'll us know, you know. I will. Because I, I will. appreciate it, man. You know, I. Uh, I mean, I can't identify with some things you said, but I can identify with. I can identify with just wanting to make your parents proud. I do. And not do. giving up on that dream. I do. Exactly. Thank you a lot. Yeah. Man. Thank you. A cool, lot. man. Uh, Stephen, we appreciate you uh, chatting with us and we'll do it again soon. We will. Thank yeah. you a lot, man. Thank All right, man. Know. Be good out there and be in I touch, will. huh? Thank you a lot. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to get back. I'll be back in just a second. I'm going to um, I'm gonna walk Stephen out, but I'm going to, uh, and I'll catch some calls and, uh, and we'll get on to the hotline. And we had a lot of great calls that came in on the hotline. Um, a lot of people talking about worries about the future, people that don't believe in the future. Um, you scared of the future, Steve? No. I mean, I'm, I believe in future. You I heard mean, it. That's all you got. <laughs> if you don't have a future, we'll, 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 we'll believe in what's behind you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You yeah. heard it, man. We'll be, uh, yeah. uh, I'll be, you don't want to go behind you. 
Just go for, uh, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll be right it. back. Steven will be back in a few weeks, man. Thanks, Steven. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you a lot. Yeah? I always go forward. You come forward. back, huh? I always go forward. All right, man. We'll go forward and just turn a couple times and make it back here. You know what? You end up here. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. All right, guys. We just had Steven in here. Even Steven. Um, and I'm excited that he's going to come back. You know, I don't know if it'll be a regular thing that he checks in with us or that he, you know, I, I don't know. You know, he was a, he was definitely in a different vibe than than he was at the DMV. Um, he was, you know, I don't I don't really know kind of what level he was on. He kind of seemed to calm down after a bit, you know. Um, but I thought it was interesting for him to come in and just share, you know, and to share some of his story. Um, you know, this is the first interview that I've had with somebody in here. So I was, you know, a little pensive, you know, I don't know him. Um, so that was, you know, that can be an issue sometimes if you don't know somebody. Um, I, but I did feel, I felt grateful that he shared some real stuff from his life, you know, because all we are, I feel like is. A lot of what we are, are some of the toughest things that have happened to us. And most of what we do is not talk about those things. And that's one thing that's just kind of fascinating to me about life. Um, and I think it's one reason, one reason why I gravitate towards comedy. Because a lot of times people on that stage or it used to seem like, and some guys still are, are sharing, you know, things that they've gone through, real stuff, and trying to make it entertaining. Um, and that's one reason why I like a lot of times going to some of these different types of, uh, you know, meetings, um, the AA programs and the uh, sex, sexual uh, and love addiction anonymous meetings, because you get to hear stories in there. Like I can, I can even talk to some of my best friends and it's hard to get to a real level with them sometimes. But man, you go into some of these rooms and you get to hear people's realness. You get to hear their truth and you get to hear it a lot of times without much filter. Um, and that's one of the things that really draws me, I think, to that environment. It's one of the reasons sometimes it may be bizarre, but it might be one of the reasons why I stay uh, sober because the only thing that I have to give up my ticket to the show my ticket to the AA show to be able to hear people's stories and to be able to just hear what they're in bro what they've been through the dirt the dirt in their heart um, is just that I have to give up I don't have to I can't drink or, or, or use drugs that's the ticket like hey you pay your admission today yes I did then you can come in that's it so anyway um, I don't know if that's why I stand, but, but anyway, back to, back to Steven. Uh, it was interesting. I thought he shared a lot. Um, and it, you know, he has, he, he battles addiction. I didn't realize that as much. I, I, I guess I, I thought that he, you know, he'd been caught up at moments in the dark arts, but he definitely seemed like, like, you know, he had a boot on when I met him, but he was more jovial. You know, like I said, he was involved with some Snickers or, or, um, it could have been paydays or what. Well, the whatchamacallit keeps popping into my head. It's also a candy, um, a candy with a long name, but it um, pops into my head as that could have been also something he'd been snacking on. But but anyway, uh, I'm glad that he came in, man. And let's get to uh, let's get to some questions, man. You guys had some call in questions, um, and, and I'm gonna look for other for other guests to come in. You know, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of get into the life of a little bit of a troubled brother. I don't really sit down that much and talk with a troubled brother like like Steve and, you know, and, and get to hear some of their problems. So for me, um, that was interesting, you know, and just to sit there man to man and, and try to share. I was a little nervous, to be honest with you. So hopefully uh, if Steven comes back, that we'll get to learn, learn a little bit more about him. All right, let's get into some questions here, man. Um, now, last week, I, I wanted people to call in about um, technology, some technology fears. So let's start uh, right there. What's up, Theo? This is uh, Aaron from Kentucky. 
Ooh, uh, really enjoyed the podcast lately, man. It's just great to hear be so, somebody so uh, open and honest about their experiences. Thank you very much, Aaron. Onward. Um, I wanted to just address some of the concerns you expressed on the last podcast about, you know, the future of technology and stuff. Uh, you know, I, I've kind of felt like you a while back. I was pretty uh, freaked out by the way and direction things were going, especially with self-driving cars like you expressed. But the fact of the matter is, man, it's... I am. I did. And last week I expressed some concerns about technology. Like, at what point is it not good for us anymore? You know? Like, we're people. Like, at some point... Like, if what if an enemy came in and just kept attacking us so that we couldn't use our brains and then we didn't use our legs and then we'd... Like, we would... If any In, in any other facet, that's considered a disease. You know, like if somebody, it's considered an, an, an infection, but just because it's technology, um, it's considered advancement. And that's where some of my hang up is. I'm not anti-technology. I'm communicating to you guys right now over technology. We're, we're interacting with each other over technology, but I am worried. I am worried. Anyway, let's continue on with, uh, with his question here, Aaron. Technology is just going to keep proceeding and getting better and better and hopefully help our, help our lives anyways. Um, back to the self-driving cars, I mean, millions of people die every year from car accidents. Wait, millions of people? I don't, I have a tough time believing that. Um, I would have Sher, uh, Sherb look that up for us, but I, I don't, uh, we don't have uh, any interactive capabilities here yet. Um, I, I don't think millions of people die every year from car accidents i could i could imagine a million but i would i would be tough to think that millions um just because a lot of people don't have cars but anyway onward three or four accidents from the self-driving cars so i mean that's terrible you know that, that, that those people passed away but you think about the lives saved from that and that's that's just amazing um you know that's just one example um but yeah, let me say, I'm going to say this, I'm going to interrupt you there, uh, Aaron. I'm going to say this about the self-driving car. I think it's bullshit. I'm not saying it's not capable. I don't think we're going to get there. I don't think in my lifetime we will. Now, in my children's lifetime, which I don't even have any children, so in someone's lifetime, potentially if I meet a woman, that we're going to have children, yes, then yes, I think it could happen then. But they couldn't even make a skateboard. There was, I don't know how old you are, Aaron, but there was a rumor when I was young. They had the movie Back to the Future. One, two, or three came out. And they had a skateboard that skated for you. You didn't have to do anything. It was air-powered. You know, that that's never happened, okay? Maybe there's a video of it happening somewhere. They freaking, they had the shit thing that Justin Bieber, the single roller skate that he was on, and that thing was a piece of shit. Mike Tyson almost killed himself on one of them, and uh, somebody else almost uh, burned down an airplane on one. You know, they can't even make that. That's just that's just a fucking electric roller skate. So, you know, this everybody's talking about the self-driving car. I don't see it. I don't see it because we could have it now, you know, and we don't have it. We don't have the self-driving car. You know, like, we can't even get to... We can't even get to the uh, to the uh, to the to the skateboard we were promised. So I just don't really see us getting that level of actually having a. Oh, think of all the infrastructure that have to be adjusted and created. Okay, so you have a self-driving car, but then you have somebody that still wants to use a gas-powered car. How's that going to work? I just don't see it working. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't. I honestly, I don't see it coming to fruition in my lifetime. I'm not saying that I'm against. It. I just don't see it coming to fruition. Anyway, on. I guess the idea I wanted to express was that uh, technology is just the type of science that's propelling us forward right now. Uh, you know, we've always had industry and uh, medicine and different uh, parts of science that have progressed. You know, exponentially, exponentially fast. And currently, the technology is just kind of pulling us in that direction. That's a good point. That's a good point. Sometimes I think of it as, you know, that it's never going to end. But I guess we're just at a time when it seems to be the hot thing. Like the Industrial Revolution occurred. And at the time, people were like, steel is it. Can you believe steel? You know, and now 
it's it's just tech it's tech it's tech um so yeah and so if we can figure out how to use it right and just not waste all of our time on uh you know stupid apps and stuff like that and uh you know, give back to the people that do end up losing their jobs from stuff like self-driving cars, you know, hopefully some kind of universal incomes or something like that. Uh, and I'll stop you right there, and I appreciate your call, Aaron. I appreciate you calling in. I appreciate you addressing what was a concern of mine. You know, you taking it upon yourself to recognize that that was something I was concerned with. Um, yeah, like, that's another thing. Like, Yes, technology, sure, okay? Advancement, um, robots, robotics, where it takes away people's jobs. Now, that's alarming because then you have, you just have a man who suddenly feels useless. And that's one of the biggest concerns for me is I just don't want to feel useless as a human being. Like at some point, it would be great to just make it so we all have jobs. I don't need a fucking robot doing something. There's, no, I don't get anything out of that. You know, like I'm the old, fa I, I'm, I guess I'm old fashioned, you know, like I want, I, I'm at a, I feel like we're at a good place now. We're at a good place now. We can do all kinds of amazing stuff. You know, I would love to see medicine advance more, but when it comes to the part where we're taking away people's jobs, I just don't see the value in it. You know, and my buddy that is like, well, everybody's going to drive Uber, but w what everybody's you're going to have Uber drivers just pulling guns on each other saying, get him, you know, tr trying to get passengers. It's going to be like two Uber drivers pulling guns, being like, get in my fucking car. No, get in my fucking car to try and make money. Um, I just don't see the end game. You know, I don't see how it ends well for humans. Because worse, we're the ones that are living. Like, why take away the, the, some of the joys are going to work, feeling useful, um, especially for men. Like, I feel like a lot of technology just takes, is just killing the spirit of men. You know, they got these robot dicks out there. And I mean, I know they've always had, you know, dildos and electric, you know, clitoral you know, wands, but now, now they have, I saw something the other day. It's a, it hooks onto the wall and it has like a crank or something and it just fucks whoever wants it. You know, I, what is like, I just don't see the value at a certain point. I don't feel the value, you know, I mean, how far do we go? You know? I mean, if you want to make something that's going to help people, make something that's fun. I can see that, you know, make mittens that that put themselves on you. How about that, huh? Or like a shirt that climbs up your body when you get up in the morning and puts itself on you. That'd be cool. <sniffs> Snaps all go together, you know. What about, or if you could train your dick, make something that can, you know, communicate with skin cells and it could train your dick to come out of your pants and urinate. And then go back into your pants. So you could still, you know, look at your phone or something while you're at the, uh, while you're at the urinal, you know? What about making our hair harder? How about that? I'd love to see athletes that don't have to wear helmets. You know, stupid helmets, you can't even see a lot of the athletes' facial expressions. So how about that? How about making something that makes our hair harder? So that football players can play football and just wear their hair, you know, grow their eyebrows out or grow out a beard to really get the full helmet feeling, you know. I don't know. Make our dicks harder. What about that? Make our dicks way harder so they can, so people could fight with their dicks if they needed to or, you know, get into something. Open up a, you know, a door. You got locked out. Get in there or sharpen your, I don't fucking know, dude. But those are some things where technology, I see the value. You know, in other ways, I don't see the value because at a certain point, by advancing technology, we're making ourselves as humans feel uh, useless. And that is the line where I don't see the value. But to go back uh, to Aaron, the caller's point or the caller's inquiry and, you know, some of his overall thoughts, we would need to have some sort of compensation. Like if 
you know, if there's, if a technology comes along that takes away truckers, the, the, the jobs of truckers, then you need to subs, you need to give something to those truckers so that there is compensation there or create a, a tertiary job that, okay, is safer. So it'd be less accidents, less falling asleep at the wheel. I mean, truckers are doing gnarly shit out there anyway. I mean, we, let's be honest about that. I saw a man one time had a damn chessboard set up on his trucker, on his dashboard up there. This dude's doing chess, okay? A British game doing British games. And, you know, and that was alarming. Um, Because, first of all, how the fuck is a trucker playing chess, to be honest with you? No offense if you're a trucker, but truck they're more checkers guys. They're checkers type of men. And... To think this man was doing that and operating this big rig was alarming. But uh, but anyhow, yes, if we're going to advance, then we need to have some sort of system in place that subsidizes these people that lose their jobs um, and create some sort of a tertiary work environment where they can still feel uh, contributing and useful. Because when a man doesn't feel useful, that's when the man can really get into some uh, deviant activities and can get caught up in the dark arts. And that's true right there. All right, let's move on to let's move on to another question here. Let me see what we got. We got um um let me see. Hey to you. My name is Josh. I am twenty four from Cincinnati. We got Joss, 24, from Cincinnati. That's chili country. They have chili there. They're famous for chili. Um, and one, I haven't had, they have two types of chili that are popular. One of them is disgusting. I've had that one. Onward. Uh, just to start, I want to say that I listen to uh, a few podcasts, and yours is by far the most right now that I'll afford to. Okay, that's good, buddy. Let's... Uh... Okay, that's good. Let's go. And anyway, I'm, I'm calling in because for quite a few years now, I've been interested in Salem County. And for about the last year, over a year, I've written some bits. Okay, this is Josh. He's interested in stand-up comedy, and he has written some bits. That's where we are. Onward, Josh. Um, I'm planning to go up on stage, but just has never gone up. So um, I'm hoping maybe you can be my tipping point and maybe um, I just think I'll, I'll have a good time with it and I'll, I'll enjoy it. Okay. Um, I'm going to interrupt you there, Josh. I appreciate you calling, man. It seems like you want to know if you should do stand-up comedy. You've been thinking about it. And I've gotten a couple calls about this. And for one, I'm going to let you know, even just from that call, you're going to have to, you got to project a little bit better or at least speak clearer. I don't know if you were calling from a, you know, a, 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 a can. It sounded like you could have been calling one of those cans that children plug in through a, you know, a piece of yarn to another can. I don't know what you were calling from. And I'm sorry to be mean, but I mean, if you're going to call, try and, and communicate. You know, we're trying to communicate here. That's the number one thing we're doing. And I need you to do that if you call in. Um, but here's the thing, Josh. I mean, it sounds like there's two reasons, I think, why you wouldn't do it. Either you're lazy, and I'm not accusing you, but I'm saying that that's one of the things. And I say that because I've been lazy. I can relate. You know, there's things, there's not a week that goes by that, I ask myself why I haven't published a book. You know, I've thought about doing that for years. I've written tons, but can't get it together. I get lazy or I get caught up in my own depression and also lazy or I, I just don't get it together. But if you're lazy, man, you got to, you know, do something. Get up. Get going. You're young. I think you said you're 23 or something. Join the army, dude. Um, date a black man. Do something that's going to get you, you know, on your toes. Even if you're straight, get out there and date a brother. You know, date a black man, that will fucking probably keep you on your toes, dude, you know, because being lazy is an infection. That's one thing that I find in my life. It's an infection, man, and you have to battle against it. Um, 
you have to battle against it. Whether it means just setting an alarm and getting up, you know, you do something for three days in the morning, you'll start to slowly develop a pattern. That's what I find for me. But the other reason you haven't done it is that, um, is that you're scared. The lazy thing I can't really help you with, you know, that's a personal battle, I feel like. But if you're scared, uh, that's something that I feel like I can help you with. And, I, and I'm happy that you reached out about that, you know. Um, I'll say this. Doing stand-up, it's easier than you think. You're obviously already considering it. You know, you're calling about it. Uh, you're curious. Um, you just have to get up there. And here are a couple of cheats that I would use, dude. For one, if you're going to try stand-up comedy, here's a couple ideas. Um, tell a story. Tell a story that you already know in your life. That way it's less pressure than a joke. A joke, you're like, you tell it and you're waiting for that reaction. A story, you tell a story. And there could be moments along it where they laugh or moments along it where they just listen. As long as you get to the end of the story, then you have at least served a purpose. You know, you've at least told a story and they've at least heard a story. So there's some exchange there. And then you can go back and listen if you record your set to moments where if they did laugh, um, and you can start to mine those moments uh, and add more jokes in there or expound more in those moments. And then the next time you tell it, you'll have a little bit of a different story or a bigger story. And you'll have a couple of places there where you know laughter can occur and just keep repeating that. Um, another option, tell some jokes that aren't yours. Uh, we live in a day and age where if... It doesn't even seem to matter if you tell jokes that aren't yours anymore. Um, plagiarism seems to be okay as long as you are, you know, already popular, you know. So you can always just tell some jokes that aren't yours and do that. I mean, you could do Amy. I mean, Amy Schumer always gets accused of it, and she's a friend of mine. But you could, it would be funny almost to do Amy Schumer's set. Get up on stage and just try it. Or, um, it'd be funny, right? Try Amy Schumer's set. Just try it or get on stage and try any comedian set just because you're obviously just practicing. You're trying to get a feel for a stage. So a great cheat um, and a great and I, I don't mean like I just mean in like a way like, you know, um, to learn a great way to learn is to take jokes that already work and just say then you're practicing in front of a crowd. You're doing stand-up comedy. You're trying stand-up comedy, you know? Um, and I just use Amy Schumer because she gets accused a lot. Uh, Carlos Mencia is always accused. Um, who I, I don't know who else has been recently accused. Um, uh, oh, Melania Trump. That seemed kind of plagiarized. But then all, you know, I feel like most of the, most of every presidential speech, uh, uh, most of it's all has sounded the same to me throughout my lifetime. A bunch of racket. Uh, anyhow, man, if that's it, those are some options that can help you uh, to maybe try stand-up comedy. All right, onward. I appreciate it. Let's get into something else here, man. Um, let's get into another call here. Hey, yo. What's going on, you little Gemini jester? Uh, this is John Doe calling from a undisclosed location due to the subject matter of what I want to call you about, but... Oh, this ought to be good. John Doe, calling from an undisclosed location. Onward, John. Listen, Theo, I got a good idea to help keep myself accountable. So basically, I've been struggling with uh, painkiller and heroin <clears throat> addiction for like... Ooh, sound like, he had, sound like he had one caught in his throat right there, huh? Onward years now and I'm 23 years old and I'm really just sick of it and uh, I do quite well I make it like you know two three weeks at a time and end up using a day and then I'll make it another two three weeks so it's just just this never ending cycle because yeah it sounds like I mean you use the word cycle right there it sounds like a cycle you know and that is the that's the point whenever I was partying that I noticed for me it wasn't healthy you know and I'm going again to the statement that, look, if you're out there partying, I'm not telling you not to party. I don't care if you're fucking, you know, you got two hookers at the bottom of a wishing well right now and y'all are doing, 
you know, you know, little eight ball bumps off of each other's bungholes. You know, that's fine. That's activity. But what I'm saying is if you are creating a bad habit or a bad cycle, then that's when, for me, I got nervous. Let's keep listening to John Doe here and his uh, his his deal. It sounds like he wants to make a, to keep him accountable. Well, because I've never really gotten bad enough that I need to like tell my family and everybody. So no one knows. So it's all like secretive, and I can't really tell anybody like, hey, you know, try to keep me accountable if I do screw up. No one even knows. So I'm thinking I want to start calling you every week. I'll call you. Every week, every Sunday night, and I'll leave you a message about how I'm doing. I think that uh, it could be beneficial for me because I really look up to you as a... Well, I mean, I heard him say he looks up to me, and I appreciate that, Steve. Uh, sorry, I almost called him Steven, dude, um, which is interesting because this is kind of like a little bit how, you know, the conversation ended with Steven. You know, I wanted him to come back in. You know, I want him to be well. Um, and then here is this gentleman, uh, John Doe, saying that he's had a bad cycle that he's noticed in his own life. I'm saying this, uh, John, if you notice, you know, you're saying to me, you're 23. For three years, you've been on and off using, it sounds like opiates and pain pills to me. I mean, you mentioned heroin, um, but I, which I don't see how you would survive so well doing heroin, but I've never been involved with heroin. But... You don't tell your friends, you're not asking them to keep you accountable because nobody knows, or your family. But you are reaching out to a stranger, um, which I appreciate, man. I appreciate you reaching out. This is a safe place to reach out for sure. Um, you know, it's why, I mean, it, as, as weird as it is that this is out in the world, uh, I consider it a safe place to reach out to people, you know, to share. Because I get some neat interaction by people calling in. And I've got a lot of great voicemails from people just being encouraging and sharing advice with me. But it sounds like you're looking for someone to keep you accountable. And what that's called really is a sponsor, man. You know, it's a sponsor. And you'll get that by going into like an AA or some type of a program. You know, a sponsor will keep you accountable. So onward. Just as a person, and I really appreciate the advice you get. And I think that it, you know... I know that there's someone out there who's going to care that I did, you know, make it another week and I did the right I think that that could really help me up to you next week. So far this week, I've been a different week, man. Okay, I kind of trailed off maybe. Hopefully you didn't catch a bad gram there at the end, but... um I'll say this, bro. It sounds like you need. It sounds like you might need a sponsor if you're starting to worry about accountability. You know, and that could be a real thing. I'm happy for you to call. You know, if it's, you know, I, you know, I'd love for you to, to call in and leave us a voicemail. I can't promise you that I'm gonna put it on the air. Or that I'm gonna put make it a part of this past weekend. Um, I can promise you that I'll listen. You know, um, I can promise you that. Um, I can promise you that I care. That I want you to get better. Uh, but I also. You know, I can't be I can't be a real sponsor. Um, I could sponsor you, but I can't be a real sponsor uh, like this. You know, in this type of engagement. But yeah, if you want to call in, man, um, John Doe from an undisclosed location, and let us know how you're doing from time to time. If you can be candid and realistic about what's going on and share stuff that's real, um, you know, I'll, I'll try and keep some of our listeners updated uh, if it fits, man. If it feels real. But I wish you the best of luck, man. And if you start to really get worried even more, then I'd look into maybe an AA or some type of a program. Uh, let's get to. Let's get to another question. Now, I want to say this. Um, I want to – here, let's get to one more really quick. What's up, Thea? Hey, man, I was really super impressed with your vocabulary. You seem to just pull these, these extremely, you know, out of left field words um, <clears throat> out of your pocket all the time, and it just impresses me. Do you read books? Um, where do you get this extreme vocabulary? Thanks, buddy. Love you. You know, I always liked words, man. I always liked words and sounds. Um, and uh, I appreciate you saying that, though, that I, I, I have a nice vocabulary. Um, 
I actually want to go back to school sometime to really get into writing and words. And a friend of mine that died, he choked to death. He was on opiates, and he choked to death on a piece of chicken over there in Woodville, Mississippi. But he got me a rhyming dictionary when I used to work on his farm. And I really have always treasured that book. Um, and I always like sounds. And I don't really, I don't know, my brain just kind of surprises me sometimes with words. And I like words. And... Um, and I appreciate you at least, you know, thinking that I had some sort of a, a flair for um, for the oral vernacular, brother. Uh, all right, let's get to one more call here. Now, I had a lot of people call in about missing persons. I had some good ones. And what I want to do this week, I'm going to try to, I know I've said things before, I'm trying to do them. We're coming along. We're in a, you, you know, an amazing new spot this week uh, by the grace of a higher power and by Sherb and by Conscious Studios over here in Santa Monica. Um, I, want to, I want to get into this missing persons thing more because I told you guys that a boy when I was young was playing hide and go seek and it, he went and hid and, the, and then he might have just went off and hid away from everybody forever. Um, we had some people calling a, a good deal of calls about missing persons. Um, and so I want to, I want to get to one of them and then we'll try and get to the rest of them, maybe in a tertiary segment, uh, later on this week, we'll put out a little bit of a, a surprise episode. I'm gonna try to do it because I had a couple of calls about them and I really wanted to talk more uh, about the missing. And if you are also a missing person or if you have been, um, or have dated someone that's missing or knew somebody and, and you can't find them, um, you can call about that and leave that on the hotline. I'll give that hotline number one more time right here. Uh, that number is 985-664-9503. Also, if you are missing, if you are somebody that's missing, um, you can call. If you want to leave a message to your loved ones and just let them know that you're okay, and we'll try to put that on uh, on the show as well. Uh, we're going to get to one of them right here, though, uh, right now. Here we go. This is hey, Theo. Atlanta. So this week you asked listeners to call in about a missing person and um that's ironic because i'm about to become a missing person so um to provide you with some context please do brother um this guy's threatening to become a missing person pretty much so i'm I'm the son of like a, um, two immigrant parents okay and son of a couple of grunts quality that runs rampant among immigrant parents is narcissism and a bit of a controlling behavior and, and they really try to that's pretty true i think my friend fahim is a he might be a se first second or first generation i don't know what it's called but uh he said his parents um have a lot of um expectations onward and, and they really try to impose their goals on you and and, and that's really what i'm trying to run away from so my parents want me to be in college, but I'm absolutely miserable in college. So. Wow. You know, and I almost feel like this is a joke at first, but then I feel like in this guy's voice you can hear uh, some reality, you know? I'm I'm looking to run away from home and um, kind, of, kind of follow my goals in life rather than theirs. Wow. You know, it's interesting. I didn't, I didn't have that personally. I didn't have that, you know, I didn't have anybody really saying, I had a friend of mine's dad that said I should go to college, but other than that, I didn't have that pressure. So I can't imagine what that pressure would be like. Uh, and then to feel like you're, you're literally going to run away from it. So, um, wow. I, I'm going to be running away, I guess, or be a missing person. This kid may have indigestion. That's the thing I can't tell a little bit. If he's being real and he's faking a voice, or if he might have a little bit of indigestion. Could have had um, chicken parm give me that onward. By next Monday, and all I really have to my name is 20 bucks and a Greyhound ticket. Oh, man. Uh, hold on. I'll just let's keep it. Well, Greyhound... I used to ride Greyhound, man. It's a lot of men on there trying to show you their dick. A lot of people got out of prison. Some light cocaine on there. I mean, hell, let's be... Some man cut another man's head off of a Greyhound on a Greyhound bus. Or it could have been Peter Pan lines, but I think they're all coagulated. But did that to him up in upstate New York. So there's a lot of seedy 
you know, a lot of people, you know, just riding around trying to collect fucking abortion money, I feel like, on those buses. But anyway, uh, onward. And really, that that doesn't really worry me because I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about what the future holds for me. Okay, you're optimistic about what the future holds. Well, college can be... You know, I wish you could take away the seeing college as something your parents are pressuring you into doing and find try to, you know, reframe it so it's something that you can actually enjoy. Because if you have a lot of if if you feel confident in your abilities, then there there should be an ability that you can maneuver or use in a college in, uh, on a college template that you can actually, you know, find some joy, your own joy, uh, onward. And, and, and I know I could make something of myself if I work hard. So just letting you know about my soon to be missing person story. Thank you. And big time fan of the podcast. Wow. Wow. To think, I mean, that guy's going to be a missing person. Jesus, man. That's crazy. I mean, I always, I always, I love, I love missing people, man. I've always loved missing people. You know, I, I just felt, I guess I just felt missing for so long in my life. I just felt missing. Um, well, look, brother, if you were, if, I mean, this was, and this call was six days ago. This call was six days ago, so this boy could potentially be out there and be missing now. Um, if that's the case, man, I do hope that you will call and check in. Uh, that seems to be a theme, this this episode. Uh, I hope you'll call in and check in and let us know what you're doing out there. Um and at least let your parents know, I guess, it, that you're okay. You know, I don't know. I've never been a parent, but I can only imagine what it feels like to not be in touch with your child. And that seems very alarming to me. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. But uh, I don't even know. I don't know what to say, man. Good luck. Good luck being, you know, being missing. And good luck, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know how you hide better. I know you use cash. That's what they say. Um, I mean, I do encourage you to chase your dreams. I just, I wish that you could figure out that issue with your parents so that that didn't have to affect you to the point where you feel like you had to run away, but maybe that's so intense. Um, I just hope you take care of yourself. $20 in a Greyhound. That's ill advised, man. I don't know who's advising you. Um, if you're getting it, you know, or if you're getting any advice at all. You might want to check in with somebody that can, you know, you might want to check in with some other people. Because for me, my vote is no on that. If this was, you know, um, what's that show where Howie Mandel and um, and Mel B are on there? I don't know. But if this were my vote, I'd say Ixnay on the Eving on a Us Bay. Eving lay on a Us Bay, Yeah. Don't leave on a bus, bro. Bad idea. Greyhound, never a good idea, dude. Never. I'm going to say that. And I'm, I've been known to troll the Greyhound bus help Twitter feed. Never a good idea. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to say I'm going to try to make a, a more of an episode that's just about the missing persons. I want to get into that. I want to, you know, I want to get into that and I want to answer more of those calls. But but we've just done too much tonight. Um but I say tonight, man, I don't know if you, some of you guys have a higher power. You don't have to. But, you know, lift some of these guys up in your thoughts, you know. Um, just take a moment and think about what some of these other people out in the world are going through. You know, we had Steven in here tonight. And, um, you know, he's been through some hull oh, shit. Hold on. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. God, that second one had a woman in it. It seemed like, mm, seemed like it had a little Asian in it. That third one, but um, but yeah, you know, keep some of these guys in your thoughts that are going through some stuff. Uh, and I appreciate you guys being here with me. 
Um, you know, check out the album 30 Pound Bag of Hamster Bones. Um, shit, I feel bad even, you know, pitch and moan wares at this point. But uh, but God bless you guys or, uh, or whatever higher power take care of you. Uh, and take care of yourselves, man. Be good to yourselves. We're not going to go with any outro music this week. Um, I just had too much to put together, man. You know, just a lot of moving parts and and uh, and Conscious Studios and Sherb helping us put it together over here. Uh, my buddy Adam, I was texting with earlier, um, helped me come up with some production ideas and just grateful, man. A lot of gratitude from here. Um, thank you guys for supporting the podcast. We got to 6,000 subscribers on YouTube and that's awesome, man. You know, and people just calling and leaving cool messages and just like share this, man. If you, if you think, you know, we're trying to put up little pieces on YouTube of, you know, people sharing and, and just opening up their stories and me trying to share my experiences in return. Um, and if you find one of those resonates with a friend of yours, send it to him, man. Just drop him a text or something, you know, cause the more that we all share our shit, dude, uh, you know, the cleaner our asses get. That's what I believe. The more we share our shit, the cleaner our asses get. Uh, take care of yourselves, man. Be good to yourselves. Why don't you try that? Take care. <laughs>